Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on personalised CB bracelets. As you can see from the examples, you can personalise all of your CB bracelets with an, either an emblem or a letter. In your kit, you're going to get your seed beads in black and in white to create your bracelets. You're going to get your fire line, which is your threading material, your beadsmith beading needles and a full findings pack. So you've got everything you need to create these lovely bracelets. So here's your findings pack and you've got everything in there that you're going to need. So I'm just going to move this out to the side. Now purely for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use two different coloured beads to create this weave. So this weave is called um, the square stitch. So I'm going to use two different colours and they're also bigger beads than you're going to get in your pack. It's just for demonstration purposes that you can see. I'm also using um, sort of like a felt mat to be able to pop my beads on so they don't roll away anywhere. So a felt mat or a microfiber cloth or a tea towel, something like that where you can pop your beads on and they're not going to roll. They're also easier to pick up if they're on these kind of mats. I've gone ahead and I have threaded up about a metre and a half of my fire line onto my needle. Now because your fire line is a bonded material, you can take the end of your fire line which you're wanting to um, thread. If you run your nail across the end, it will flatten out and make it easier to thread through the eye of the needle. So what we need to do for this bracelet is we're going to create the centre section of the bracelet. So I'm going to pop a stopper bead onto my thread to start with and that's going to sit halfway down the amount of thread that I've got. So I'm going to pick up just a stopper bead so it can be a different colour than, than what you need, than what you're using. So in the bracelets we've used a predominant colour for the main, main area of the bracelet. So I'm just popping that about halfway because we're going to create the centre section of the bracelet and then we're going to create the two long lines of seed beads. And then we're going to go back through this, this bead to create the stopper. So I've got my bead and I've threaded it across down onto my thread and I'm now going to come back the opposite way through the thread and this will create a little loop on my seed bead and stop any beads I'm now going to add thread on from falling off. It, is also, it can also be moved. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up seven of my seed beads. And you can see how easy they are to go onto the needle. If you just tap the needle onto the seed bead, they tend to jump straight on. So I'm going to let those fall all the way down to the stopper bead. So I've got them all the way down on my stopper bead. And I'm now going to turn my work so my stopper bead's facing away from me and my line of beads are facing towards me. So my thread is exiting towards my body. I'm going to take my next seed bead. So I'm going to pick up just one seed bead and I'm going to come through the very first seed bead in the opposite direction. So again, towards my body. So as I pull this one, through, what will happen is these will then sit side by side. So the first one always takes a little bit of just organising. So you can see now how it's sitting next to the gold bead. To create my thread to go back away from me, I need to go back down the same bead so my thread is exiting away. And again, just with the first bead, just making sure that you do this nice and slowly so you can organise the pattern as you're going. So I've now got my first beads sat side by side. And all I'm going to do to tighten that up is I'm just going to push that stopper bead up until I've got them secured where I want them to be. So I'm now going to take my next bead. And again, you would use the whole same colour for this section. Um, so you would use either all black or all white while you're, while you're creating this section. So I'm going to pick up my next red seed bead and I'm going to then come through the second bead again towards me. So I've popped my seed bead onto my needle, let that fall down and now I'm going to sit this seed bead underneath this previous red seed bead but next to this gold, the second gold bead down. So again, just go through the second bead and pull. 
And you can see now my thread's not actually exiting away from me, so I need to go back down through that seed bead to tighten that up. And again, just making sure that your beads are nice and tight together. And keep pulling that thread so you've got a nice section starting to appear. So again, I'm going to pick up my next bead. And this one's going to sit underneath the previous red bead but again alongside the third bead. So we're going to work down the row, just adding in each bead at a time, always towards you. Pull nice and tight to get the thread going the, same di the, the correct direction for the next bead, back down through the same bead. And pull tight. So you can see now how I'm starting to build up this design. And again, Going through the next bead in line. Just through that single bead, pulling that nice and tight. To get it going in the correct direction, because my thread's coming out through the gold bead, and I need to go back down through the red bead. You may find this easier to pick this up rather than keeping it down on the mat. Just make sure that you're in a nice, comfortable position when you are seed beading. And again, pick up the next red bead, go through the very next bead, the gold bead, pulling nice and tight. Now just be careful that you don't get that end, the other end attached through anywhere. Just make sure that that's out of the way. There we go. So we've nearly completed our first line and again back down through the same bead so that to make sure that the thread is exiting where we want it to exit. So I've just got two more beads to go. So again, pick up my next bead through the adjacent gold bead where you want it to sit. So your thread is exiting through the gold bead, then back down through the red bead And pull tight and lastly on this row my last red bead through and pull making sure it's sitting side by side and then back down through the red bead again and I've now completed my first row so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my work over so again the threads pointing towards me and then I'm going to start my next row exactly the same. So first bead on through the very first red bead. And again, I've just changed colour just for demonstration purposes. And then back down through the gold bead. So this is the section that's going to create the, the black area before the E. So if I just get that bracelet and show you which, which area you're going to be creating with this weave. So as we can see from the example here, we've got the area that we're working on at the moment is this black section here before we get to the actual initial. So we're going to do our, our stitches, our rows of stitches for five rows. And then if you look at the instructions that come in the kit, you'll see which initial you want and it'll tell you exactly how many beads of each colour to add in to create the initial as you're stitching them through. So what we're going to now show you is how to create these lines of seed beads, which then facilitate the clasp being added to the back. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and pick up a section that I've already done just a few, a few lines on. So what I'm going to do before I start with my um, seed beading, I'm just going to work my needle back through these last two rows just to reinforce the last two rows. So that's quite simply done. They all line up quite nice and neatly. Just making sure that you collect every bead and just go through one side and then down through the other. So all I've done is turn the work over so I'm always working the needle away from me and through the other side. This now has just firmed up those last two rows before we can then add on our next lot of seed beads. So we're now going to pick up 47 of our seed beads. So I'm just going to pick up, I probably won't be able to pick up all 47 just because of time restraints, but if I just pick up 20, So 
Just making sure that you've got equal amounts when you're doing this so that your bracelet isn't um, wonky. Making sure again that if you're getting to the, towards the end of your thread and the tail end of the thread is getting stuck in the beads, just making sure that it stays away. So there I've got on roughly 20 beads. You would put actually 48 beads on at this point. So from here now, I'm gonna pick up one of my jump rings. So my jump ring is these little circles of metal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the needle through the jump ring so it sits onto the first next to the last bead. And I'm just gonna then go through the jump ring again in the same direction, just to try and attach the seed, the jump ring into the seed beads. So pulling it nice and tight. And as you can see, I'm just sewing that jump ring in place. So I've now got that jump ring attached. Two or three stitches will be plenty just to hold it in place. I'm then going to pick up another 20. In your case, it would be 47, 40, oh, sorry, 48 seed beads to create the other side of my bracelet. So this is the section that we're doing now. So we've just added in the jump ring. I'm now going to attach the other side. So making sure I've got equal amounts on either end. And this also could be tailored to the size of the wrist that you're going to create for. So I'm just looking to get exactly the same amount of beads on the other side. I'm then going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the first row exactly the same. So go down through the whole row that you've just added. And there you can see now how that's attached in. So what I'm going to do now is you're going to pass the needle all the way round again and then back down the last two rows because that will just firm up this area here. Okay, so once you've done that and gone through the other side, you can then take your stopper bead off. And by to take the stopper bead off, all you need to do is, if you just hold it and just run it all the way down, it will just fall off the end. You can then thread your needle onto the other end and do exactly the same on the other end so that you then have a full completed bracelet. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and just to show you how to attach your clasp. So you already have your jump ring in place. So what we need to do to attach the clasp is we need two pairs of pliers. So the pliers that I've got are my red handled chain nose pliers and my blue handled round nose pliers. So my jump ring's already in place. So all I need to do is just disassemble the toggle clasp. And by doing that, all I'm gonna do is get hold of the jump ring that's attaching the two together. Hold, hold the jump ring in my non-dominant hand open that little jump ring up, take off both parts of the toggle clasp. You can use this jump ring in a future project. Take hold of the jump ring that's on your bracelet. Find the cut in the jump ring. Keep the cut at the top, opening it back up and attach one side of your toggle clasp. So when we open and close a jump ring, it's like you're opening and closing a door. So north to south and then south to north to close it back up. And there you have part of your toggle clasp on one side of your bracelet completed. So you would do exactly the same on the other side and you will finish off with a beautiful bracelet with an initial in the middle, fully personalized and your toggle clasp at the back.